friends today we will be discussing the different cross sectional components of canal irrigation system so the different components you need to know in the canal irrigation system that are the cross sectional elements so in this video we will be going through the different cross sectional elements like the side slope like the bomb the freeboard the bank like the dowel or dowla similarly we will be going through the inspection or service road likewise we will be dealing with the spoil bank and we will discuss on the borrow pits finally we will also discuss on the counter bomb so these are the cross sectional element that we will be discussing on this video so friend if you are new to this channel you can subscribe this channel as well and you can like share this video to your friends one thing i want to mention that always remember that failures inspire winner and failures only defeat the losers so this is the line that i have taken from the rich dad and poor dad so friends the given figure is the typical cross section of the partly filling and partly cutting irrigation canal system so the figure represents and so the various cross sectional components that are associated with the canal irrigation system so we have different components as shown in figure like we have the bank on two sides of the main canal and there and the canal is partly in cutting and the partly in filling likewise we have bomb likewise dowel or dowla we have similarly we have the inspection road okay and we have the borrow pits and the spoil bank in the given figure now here this bomb is the horizontal distance that is left at the ground level between the toy of the bank and the top edge of the cutting likewise the freeboard is the distance provided between the top of the full supply level to the top of the bank and this service road is provided for the inspection purpose of the canal and in this service road we have also provided dowel or dowla here as a measure of safety while driving through the inspection road these dowlas are provided and whenever the earthwork in the filling section is greater than the earthwork in the cutting section then the earth shall be borrowed off so for borrowing such earth you can use these borrow pits and when the earthwork in cutting exceeds the earthwork in the filling then you can use the bank called spoil bank so these are the various components that are used in the canal irrigation system and we will be going through this typical cross sectional element in partly filling and partly cutting sections now friends the first cross sectional element that we will be going to deal is the side slope the side slope should be such that they are stable depending upon the type of soil and comparatively steeper slope 
can be provided in the cutting section as compared to the filling section as in the cutting section the soil is a bit more steeper or more stable than the soil in the filling section so a typical slope of one horizontal to one vertical that is one used to one to 1.5 horizontal to one vertical can be provided in the cutting section whereas in the filling section 1.5 horizontal to one vertical to two horizontal to one vertical slope are generally provided that is the in the filling section 1.5 used to one or two two used to one side slope can be preferred here so the second cross sectional component of irrigation system canal irrigation system is the bomb B R M bomb. So it is the narrow strip of land at the ground level between the inner toe of the bank and the top edge of the cutting. So the main function of this bomb is to provide the additional strength to the banks and thus make it safe against breaches. Breach is the gap created with in the bank of the canal so breach is the gap created in the bank of the canal there are various additional functions of the bomb as well some of the other functions of bomb are it provide a wider waterway similarly it helps to protect the bank from erosion because of wave action likewise these bombs reduces the absorption losses and also prevents the leakages furthermore they produce they provide a scope for future widening of a canal irrigation system in addition with that these bombs helps to bring the saturation line within the embankment now the third cross sectional element of canal irrigation system is the freeboard and it is the gap or the margin between the full supply level and the top of the bank so this freeboard depends upon the size of the canal the location of the canal and water surface fluctuations the freeboard in a canal is provided for the following reasons first to keep a sufficient margin so that canal water does not overtop the bank in case of heavy rainfall or fluctuations in the water supply likewise the second is to keep the saturation gradient most below the top of the bank now the next cross sectional element is the bank and the primary purpose of the bank is to retain water they can be used as the means of communication and as in inspection path they must be wide enough so that a minimum cover of 0.5 meter is available above the saturation line now the next cross sectional element is dowel or dowla so it is the raised portion provided on the canal side of the service road for the safety of the vehicles moving on it it is provided above the free supply level by the margin of freeboard practically the dowels act as corps on the side of roadway to ask the canal the height of the dowel above the road level is 30 cm 
and the width at the top varies from 30 centimeters to 60 centimeters. Now the sixth cross-sectional component of canal irrigation system is the inspection road or also known as the service road. So it is the roadway provided either on one side for branch canal or on both sides for the main canal that is mainly used for the maintenance and for inspection purpose of the canal system. So whenever the canal systems have certain problems, so you need to have an assess to go to the canal system. So for making that assess, for making that inspection and for maintenance, this inspection road or service road is, is used. And for the main canal, the width of this inspection road varies from four to six meters. And for the branch canal, the width varies from three to four meters. Likewise, it is provided 0 0.4 to one meter above the full supply level that depends upon the size of the canal. So whenever the size of the canal varies, this, the, this uh, depth or height above the free, supply, free surface level also varies. Sometimes it may be 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 meters. In some of the literature, you can also see that. So basically, it is provided 0 0.4 to 1 meter above the full supply level. Now the seventh cross-sectional element is the spoil bank. So whenever the earthwork in excavation that is cutting exceeds earthwork in filling, even after providing the maximum width of the bank embankment, the extra earth has to be disposed of economically. So to dispose of this earth by mechanical transport or whatever means it may be, so it become very costly and an economical mode of its disposal may be found in the form of collecting the soil on the edge of the bank embankment itself. The soil is therefore deposited in such a case in the form of heaps on both banks or only on, only on one bank. These heaps of soil are discontinued at suitable intervals and longitudinal drains running by their sides are excavated for the disposal of rainwater. Cross drains through the spoil banks may also be excavated if necessary. Now, the eighth type of the cross-sectional component of canal irrigation is the borrow pit. So whenever the earthwork in filling exceeds the earthwork in excavation, that is cutting, the earth has to be brought from somewhere. The pits, which are dug for bringing the earth are known as the borrow pits. If such pits are excavated outside the channel, they are known as external borrow pits. And if they are excavated somewhere within the channel, they are known as the internal borrow pit. It is a very costly affair to bring soil from distance. Even in the nearby areas, these pits may cause mosquito nuisance due to collection of rain water in these pits and hence external borrow pits are not preferred. So friends, ninth cross-sectional element is our counter bomb or can also be known as back bombs. Okay, so even after providing sufficient section for bank embankment, sometimes the saturation gradient line may cut the downstream end of the bank. So in such a case, the saturation line can be kept covered by at least 0 0.5 meters with the help of counter bomb as shown in the figure. So these counter bombs 
has to keep away the saturation line at least by 0.5 meters from the toe of the downstream bank so that the bank is not eroded by this water or something like that finally we will be going through the balancing depth so for the economical canal section whenever there is equality between the earthwork in excavation that is cutting and the earthwork in filling so the depth corresponding to such an earthwork is known as the balancing depth so this balancing depth is possible only when the canal is made partly in cutting and partly in filling so whenever there exists the balance between cutting and filling the extra need of spoil and borrow pit that is to be made in the canal is also eliminated so friends this is all about the cross sectional components of canal irrigation systems so here we dealt with all the cross sectional element of the canal irrigation system so one thing i want to add in this note that you have to always remember that failures inspires winners and failures defeat only the losers so always be motivated so friends if you find this video as useful you can like and share to your friends and for such videos stay tuned to this channel thank you we will meet soon in another video